This is a guide for those of you who were in a similar position to me when the game mode first came out. I am far from claiming to be a top tier 1% player, but I put quite a few hours into it at the beginning, just so that I can ensure that I was able to complete it each week for the comms that are hidden behind it. You see, this really isn't my top of game mode, but those sneaky devs shoved in a reward that players like myself will do our best to get a hold of. So this video will be about how you can jump in as a solo player, clear the rooms, beat the nemesis, wait a week, rinse and repeat. By now, if you're watching this, I'm sure you've given Descent a go, and probably understand the basic mechanics, so I won't dig into these too much. Firstly, you need to grab a weapon and skill. Ideally, I like to start with a decent rifle. They hit hard on these earlier enemies, and are a great way to conserve ammo, which can certainly be an issue earlier on. In this footage, I wasn't quite so lucky, so instead I picked up an assault rifle. This isn't a bad choice, I may just need to purchase some ammo in between rounds. As far as the skill goes, if you're really lucky, you'll get something like the Striker Drone. This makes every room up until the Nemesis super easy. I've only managed to get this once, but it made the room so much easier to play through. However, you can't use it on the Nemesis, it just ends up being hacked and turned against you. When choosing your first skill, grab something that will help with the type of waves you'll be facing, coming through the predefined doors. The Firefly skills, something I'd never use in the main game, are fantastic. Ideally, you'd want something that can almost take care of a door on its own, while you focus on the other one. Unfortunately, in this run, I wasn't so lucky. I ended up with the Burst of Firefly. Still not a bad choice, but not as good as many other options. The first couple of rooms can be a little rough. You don't have any talents, you only have one medkit and limited ammo, and you're probably using a weapon you hate. Fortunately, the enemies are weak, but so are you. You are given 10 seconds to find a position and get comfortable. You should use this time to find both doors. Once located, choose the door with the best cover and take position. If you are unable to find the second door, take cover ensuring that your back isn't too exposed. This just means you'll need to keep your eye on the minimap to make sure you aren't being flanked. In later levels there are more than two doors, and you won't know which ones they'll be coming out of, but since this guide is more about getting to the nemesis, you shouldn't see too many of these. In the perfect situation, the aim is to take out the hostiles at the closest door, before the second door is even locked onto you. If your cover is good, there should be plenty of time. Alternatively, you could use grenades, as this is a pretty easy way of clearing a spawn, but you only get a couple of these. However, hopefully, unlike myself in this footage, you'll have a skill that can slow down one door while you take care of the other. This may all seem very obvious, but honestly 95% of the reason you'll die in these rooms is because you haven't assessed the situation properly beforehand, and may have chosen inadequate cover. I think this is where a lot of people go wrong. Think about what you're aiming for. It's all good and well clearing the floors up until the Nemesis, but there are a huge number of talents that will be completely redundant during that round. Yes, you may need some talents to help you get through to the Nemesis, but the bulk of the talents you choose should be focused on killing the Nemesis itself. For example, any talent that requires a kill to be activated is completely useless. The way I look at the Nemesis is that it hits super hard and has some fairly decent armor. My goal is to stagger it and then mow it down before it can even inflict damage on me. So when it comes to the talents, I'm looking for raw damage that doesn't have much in the way of prerequisites to activate. At this point in the run, I have no armor and I'm feeling squishy as hell. So I'm using all the cover that I can and this is where talents like Composure and Overwatch come in. Other talents like Vigilance and Precise are also super easy to activate. You can even get a lot of value out of Breadbasket and Optimist. But personally, I'm trying to stack those first two to four as high as I can. Three, four, five stacks, you're starting to hit some good DPS with very little work on your part. This isn't to say that I'm ignoring blue and gold talents altogether. Adrenaline Rush is one that saved me countless times in Descent. If you can get this leveled up two to four times, you're doing well. The gold talents are probably the least important to me, but there are a couple that I'll take at a pinch. Extra magazine size is always useful, so I don't mind Lucky Shot. But also Trauma, which I'll usually end up with. I like this because it adds a stagger on Headshot, which I'm sure you can imagine is quite useful with the Nemesis. Obviously RNG is a little bit of a factor with the talents, but you always have the option to re-roll. I wouldn't do this more than twice because it gets quite expensive, but don't feel bad spending your credits every time you get to this point, if nothing you want comes up. In this run, I had a few times where I kept re-rolling and wasn't getting anything I wanted, so I had to skip, meaning that I would have less talents when I finally met the Nemesis. After choosing your talent, you're given the option of picking the next room you tackle. Now personally, I'm trying to get to the Nemesis as fast as possible, so I'd pick all easy rooms if I could. Because of the higher Nemesis heat percentage gained, easy will get you there the fastest. 
Technically, this would mean that you have less talents than if you had taken on more of the medium and hard rooms, but I don't find the extra talents necessary. Plus, the rooms actually start to get more difficult after loop 5, and I can't be bothered dealing with that if I don't have to. However, I'm still searching for certain talents, so rather than picking the next room based on difficulty, I choose based on the proposed talent rewards. The end of the loop presents you with an arena, as sort of a boss wave. I tend to play these pretty safe. The high value target has a lot of armor and can hit surprisingly hard, plus there is usually a couple of waves. So in contrast to the way that I play the standard rooms, I'd find somewhere that's easily defendable from range and pick them off with your rifle or assault rifle. You'll notice some repetition with the arena rooms, so just find a spot you're comfortable with and let them come to you. Once you've cleared the first arena, you'll be given the option to choose an exotic talent. I'm not really going to cover these too much, there are some good ones, like the Lady Death talent, Chatterbox, Pestilence, Outcast Plague, I can't remember the actual names, but these really aren't too much to be concerned about when it comes to defeating the Nemesis. After that you'll also be given the choice of base stats to upgrade. Much like the base game, the noticeable difference against a hard hitting enemy like the Nemesis means that I wouldn't suggest putting anything into toughness, because remember, our aim is to mow it down before it's even able to react. And like I said earlier, we're not focusing on skills. So when it comes to these stats, chuck everything into offense. The completion of the arena marks the end of the loop. You are now sent back to the hub to restock, upgrade, and choose a new weapon or skill. With any credits you have left over, head to the buying station. Get at least one medkit upgrade, and then put one or two into ammo. Aim to upgrade the medkits three or four times before the nemesis round, just in case things don't go to plan. The only other upgrade that I would focus on is the extending of the offensive talent slots a couple of times, but you shouldn't need to get these right away. Next, head over to the panel on the wall and pick your next weapon. I'd completely ignore the skills unless you end up getting some really bad weapon choices. My aim over the 5-6 to six loops before the Nemesis round is to have a decent rifle and a shotgun, like the SASG or M870, but I'll take an assault rifle if needed. The shotguns are just so strong in this mode, you can actually tank a whole door without them getting a shot off. You do have to be careful doing this though, as the explodey dudes can really mess you up. Another situation where adrenaline rush saves me. From here, keep running through the rooms in loops, collecting the talents you want and upgrading your weapons. Be careful if you end up hitting too many medium or hard rooms, this will cause you to head into loop 6 before you're able to fill the nemesis heat counter. From here, rooms start to spit out multiple waves of hostiles through the doors. Before the nemesis round, you are given another visit to the hub you'll notice two buying stations. Now, because I don't plan on playing any further after completing this round, I just spend most of the credits that I have. However, there are a couple of things you need to buy first, the special ammo. In this case, I put the fire rounds on my assault rifle and the high velocity rounds on my shotgun. Generally, I try to bait the nemesis in. After that, you just want to make sure you've restocked on all your ammo, medkits and grenades. Once you're satisfied you're good to go, smash that button to start the encounter. Before I show you how this plays out, let me run you through the build I ended up with this particular run. I would consider this pretty mid to low tier in comparison to what you should be able to get, but in a second, I'll show you that this is still more than enough. Nemesis detected. System malfunctioning. Terminated. Collecting data. This was actually one of the longest Nemesis encounters that I've had recently. Usually I'd let it rush me, and I would take it down with around 6 shots of the M870. But I was a little trigger happy at the start there, so I had to use the assault rifle, which took a little longer. But I guess this is good because it shows that the shotgun is a nice to have, and isn't necessary. As you can see, it staggered almost immediately from the first shot, as well as from its own grenade. And then the following fire rounds just continue this. The high DPS was too much, too fast, so it never really had a chance to react. Well, this is where I'd usually jump off, because I've got my weekly Nemesis project and around 10-12 to 12 watch levels of experience. In this particular playthrough, I kept going for a couple more loops, just to show that there is no reason why you couldn't just keep going with this build. I'm sure there are tons of other ways to do this, but this has been consistently working for me. I don't really die to the nemesis at all anymore, and I really only wipe on the rooms because I'm starting to get a bit cocky, and end up putting myself into stupid situations. 
This mode is actually less about RNG than you think. The ability to reroll talents removes a lot of this, and there are still a huge number of weapons that this will work with. I just did my personal favourites. But if this guide still doesn't help you with getting through, the devs have stated that they're looking at the balancing of Descent, particularly for solo players. I hope you found this useful, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!